All right, guys, what's going on? We are here, cycle four. Man, the year flies by fast. We're already into November, and uh, we've been having an awesome year so far. Really get excited about cycle four. I'm so excited! Uh, if you guys are finishing up cycle three last week, we are gonna do a little bit of a deload. So the first three days this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's gonna be a little bit of what we call deload. We also like to pair those, and <clears throat> we call them back to the basics weeks, okay? So you're gonna do a little bit of uh, kind of getting nerded out on by the coaches, hopefully, and you guys will get a little bit further explanation on maybe why we do some of the things we do. You guys will do a little bit of accessory work, and what I recommend for that, guys, is really make sure that you pay attention because what you can do there is kind of pinpoint one of the accessory exercises, maybe one of the things you've been doing wrong that have maybe caused you to lack some strength, lack some mobility, lack some awareness, lack some capability, not be getting, you know, how to get under the snatch, not understanding why your grip fails all the time in workouts, like little things like that. Those are the nuggets that we're going to try to give to you guys during Back to the Basics week and some of the deload stuff. So de-stress yourselves. If you guys are feeling beat up at all, this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is a great time to take maybe two or three days off, come in, maybe do the endurance work, do something that's a little bit more uh, low-key and let yourself feel fresh and ready for the end of the week. And on Thursday, we will start with some testing. And our test for this uh, cycle is gonna be really fun. We're gonna be doing some deadlift and some pressing strength. And so we'll have a couple of tests, actually. We'll do a conventional deadlift test, and we'll do a sumo deadlift test. We'll do a strict press, and we'll do a push press. And what we're gonna look at, at least for me, in my nerdery, I'm gonna look at the ratio between the two, okay? And what we wanna see is we want to see a deadlift and a sumo deadlift that are more, no more than maybe 10% off of each other. If you have anything that's a greater than a 10% uh, kind of cut, so let's say my sumo deadlift is 400 and my conventional deadlift is 500, okay? That's a 20% difference. That's a huge difference. That's a big imbalance. So what I'm gonna focus on later in the cycle, once we start giving you guys some options, is I'm gonna choose to work on my sumo deadlift because that's the weaker of the two. Inherently, if I get better at that sumo deadlift, if I improve that imbalance, my conventional deadlift will get better also. I'll make that ratio tighter. That's gonna help me with both injury prevention and strength and capability. Now, if I instead just say like, oh, I just wanna get my conventional even higher, right? Well, that's not necessarily gonna carry over to the sumo deadlift. It's probably why you have that imbalance in the first place is you've probably done significantly more reps of the conventional versus the sumo. And when we're doing conventional, uh, or when we're doing workouts for CrossFit, a lot of times everybody's gonna go to conventional. So we're gonna switch that up a little bit too, but I also want you guys to be thinking about making sure that throughout this cycle, you should feel like you maybe do more reps of the one that you are worse at, okay? And again, for those of you guys who are newer, conventional means that our feet are inside of our hands, sumo means that our feet are wide and our hands are inside of our feet, okay? Uh, so, uh, the other focus is going to be some pressing strength. So we're going to look at strict press, we're going to look at push press, we're going to make sure that we understand having good tracking mechanics coming down, good loading mechanics, and we're going to work on some of that slower stuff in the accessory portion of class. Working on, again, some single arm dumbbell stuff, some banded stuff, uh, and really making sure that we build some good eccentric lowering movement. And then we're also going to be doing a little bit of handstand push-up work and push-up work uh, with that stuff generally. So that'll all kind of fall into one pressing strength cycle. But you guys will see a lot of the barbell stuff in terms of press and push press, and that'll be an every week kind of thing. Um, as we start looking at some of that pressing strength stuff, guys, deadlifts and pressing goes really well together. So don't be surprised if you guys see some of those in some supersets and maybe even on, this, <coughs> on the same day. So, uh, so that's going to be something that's kind of fun to play with. It's one of my favorite combos, kind of like a push and a pull. And, uh, you know, the, the strict press isn't the sexiest movement in the world. You're not necessarily slinging weights. You're like, you know, struggling, like dying to get your head through. And then like, and it's like, uh, it's like 75 pounds. Okay. Um, so not the sexiest thing, but we pair that with, with deadlifts and like, that's as sexy as it can be. You're just ripping huge weights off the ground. Feels awesome. You feel super strong. So, uh, they work well together. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be our, our main strength focuses. Now, we're also going to start back into some squatting, okay? So back squat and front squat. Those will probably alternate back and forth a little bit every week. We're going to give you guys some different looks. We're going to do some high rep stuff. We're going to do some uh, tempo stuff, some pause stuff, some slow lowers, some fast paced, some bigger rep ranges. 
and uh, and really try to kind of get you guys you know some curve balls as it pertains to squats now squats with friends will start in January okay so that's gonna be our beginning of the year squat cycle that'll run for barbell club just like it did last time it'll have four days a week of training and uh, you guys can think about you know if you're gonna pair that in with some class stuff you are more than welcome to do that you just really need to make sure that you pay attention to your recovery game okay. So that squat cycle starts in January. That'll be Squats with Friends 2.0. That'll have a little bit more of a front squat focus to it, okay? And that's gonna be something that'll be really fun for the community. We'll probably have to cap spots. I know there's a lot of interest in that, so we'll put sign up here in probably like four or five weeks, uh, beginning of December time frame, and get everybody kind of signed up and dialed in for that so they know that they're gonna be doing that in January. But if you guys are planning on doing that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you hit these squat days, you start getting your legs, you start getting your core, start getting your body used to doing some heavier squats so that when we hit that in January, it's not like total shock to the system, okay? So those would be our main days. Now on the opposite days, uh, so that's that really gets us to two to three uh, days per week there with the squat, the deadlift, and the press. Um, those are gonna be your big three in terms of your raw strength development, right? And if we start thinking about, we still want to make sure that we're utilizing some of those clean and jerk gains and some of the snatch gains and some of the work that we had put in there. So we are going to do a little bit of overhead stability work, and then we'll start doing some clean and jerks and some of that kind of stuff more in workouts. And so we're going to kind of flip the bill a little bit on that. Uh, one of my favorite and one of the most challenging things that you can possibly do is do some squat clean and jerks at like a moderate to a heavy weight inside of a workout portion. Uh, so we're gonna play with that a little bit and that's always kind of a, a fun thing for people to come off of like a heavy strength building, efficiency building, clean and jerk cycle and now we're gonna put it into some workouts in, in capacities where you guys feel like you can still you know, utilize good form and good mechanics and all that stuff, okay? The overhead stability work will pair in a little bit with some of the gymnastics stuff that we're doing uh, and some of the pressing strength stuff that we're doing, some of the handstand stuff we're doing. So there will be a little bit of an accessory development on the overhead stability. You guys will see some overhead squats. You guys will start working a little bit more on building that bottom position or really just building a good overhead position. The longer I do this, the more I program, the more people I see, the more that I start to believe that most lower back issues or a lot of lower back issues are going to be put on some things that maybe people don't think they are, right? So a lot of people think lower back, oh, my lower back's the problem. Well, in reality, a lot of times it's bad thoracic mobility, bad shoulder stability, and that in turn, instead of being overhead, we start to go like this and we crank that lower back on to get that you know shoulder in the right position, probably easier to see here, right? And so I'm here and I'm back, I'm good, and now I wanna get back a little more and so I go there, right? And that cranks that lower back on like crazy. It's same thing, ankles are a huge, huge cause of lower back pain. And so what we want to start doing or the consistent thing that we need to be kind of thinking about is building a rock solid core, right? So we're going to keep doing some core work and building that rock solid core, not in the way that maybe you think about it, not in the flexion, extension, toes to bar, sit ups, that kind of stuff you know, getting out of the sagittal plane a little bit. So some things like Russian twists, um, so those pull-off presses, some of those different things that we've been kind of doing to start some rotational strength is really good. But at the end of the day, you're never going to be able to work on the stability of your core if you don't start actually stabilizing it properly when we're doing some of these weightlifting movements. So overhead's one of the hardest ones, right? Last week we had done that, uh, the split hold overhead. We do that with a high heart rate and we kind of take your legs away from you. And that's one of those things like you don't necessarily think about that as core work. At least I didn't, right? I'm huffing and puffing. I'm holding overhead. I'm just trying to let that 30 seconds go by fast so I can let my legs rest for a second. Okay. But that is really, really, that is like fundamental core work. If you're focused on making sure that your pelvis is, is neutral, your core is tight, you're tucking those ribs down in, and you've got your abs turned on, and you're working on breathing but maintaining a brace. And that is so important, it is like literally one of the most fundamentally important things that you guys can be thinking about inside of workouts. So making sure that we are actually focused on the brace while we're breathing hard is what's gonna kind of bulletproof you a little bit, obviously we'll never be fully bulletproof, but bulletproof you more for some of your exercises, some of your workouts, okay? 
So that's going to be a huge one, and we're gonna we've been hammering on that. We're gonna keep hammering on that, and uh, that'll be kind of uh, that'll be one of the this ancillary. That's it's kind of like a weird strength one. People don't think about that as strength, uh, but that is obviously definitely a huge strength that we want to be working on is building better overhead stability as it pertains to how our shoulder works with our core at the same time, especially inside of workouts. Now we're going to go into gymnastics stuff. Now we'll go into Metcons. Guys, now some gymnastics. All right, I'm really excited. We're going to try something new this cycle. And if you guys have been around for a while, you know that like every cycle that comes by, I try to give you guys something that you're really familiar with, something that you guys really like. And then I try to start to kind of give you some curveballs too, or something new, something different, something that we uh, maybe have never done before, which this is going to be, uh, or something that we at least haven't done in a while, like three, four, five years. Okay. Um, so rings, all right, what we're going to do, what you guys are going to find is we're going to have some sets of rings hung up pretty much throughout the entire cycle. And we're going to go and pick some more up and we're going to make sure that we have somewhere in that kind of 10 to 12, uh, pairs of ring range. And we're going to come in and we're going to start doing some ring training and it's going to look different every week. I'm really excited about some of the exercises that I've kind of got and how those are going to work in with our workouts. And we're going to start doing some of our famous E3 mom, E4 mom, some of those kinds of workouts with rings and a different kind of ring curve ball added in each week. Now you guys might see some familiar ones like ring dips, right? Or ring push-ups, super challenging. Okay. Or we're going to do some core work. We might do some shoulder stability work. So we've got about maybe six to eight different ring exercises that we're going to be working on. Um, and then some core exercises, some different things. We're also going to introduce a little bit of some of the muscle up uh, transition work and some of the things that I know some of you guys who maybe weren't able to do muscle up cycle would maybe want to just learn how to do. And we're going to talk about it. And we're also going to give some scales for people just to use that as like pulling strength development, strict pull up and strict dip and push up uh, development as well for those of you guys who maybe aren't interested in learning to muscle up at all. So that'll be a little bit of our dive into this and uh, hopefully maybe it piques a little bit of an interest for you guys and you guys maybe see a new kind of gymnastics uh, strength capability. Cool part about rings guys, they are awesome just for like shoulder stabilizing, core stabilizing and all that stuff. But what I love most about them is that was like my first piece of equipment. I had them just hung over a tree limb. And that was how I started like diving into my first pieces of equipment. Now mine were like, uh, like PVC sheathing over a, uh, over a cord. They aren't as developed as they are now, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's just a cool thing. If you guys are looking for like just a piece of equipment to take home and start doing a little bit of extra work, um, you know, ring rows, ring pull-ups, ring dips, um, even just ring support holds, you guys are going to find those are super challenging and it's a great thing to add to uh, just kind of a home gym. If you guys are looking for something small to do at home, that's simple, cheap, easy, um, but get a little extra work in. Okay. So hopefully we got, we can add a little bit to your repertoire and you guys can learn some new exercises and not only learn the new exercises, but really take away why you're doing the exercise. What are you doing it for? And then what is your proper form and position for that exercise? Okay. All right, and then we're also going to be doing some uh, handstand push-up and push-up work. Now, we did some uh, strict push-up work earlier in the year, right? And that was uh, that was really successful. People did really well with that. And now we want to start maybe thinking about challenging some of you guys more who have been working on some of the overhead stability, some of the handstand work uh, that we did two cycles ago, and then start kind of pairing this up and seeing if some of you guys can maybe start working on some handstand push-ups. And if you guys know me, you've been around for a while, I am not a handstand push-up fan, both because I suck at them and uh, they've always been like the bane of my existence competitively. Uh, but also, and a big reason that I struggle with that is uh, is neck pain, right? I, I do not have a very good overhead position. And when you don't have a very good overhead position, you fatigue out of being able to hold yourself up and support yourself with your shoulder and uh, kind of core musculature. And so what happens then is you start putting more weight on top of your head and then you start putting more weight on top of your neck and you start using all the wrong muscles. And then before you know it, it's like you can't do that, right? You can't look to the right or left uh, without a little pain. So, um, you know, I was talking to Dr. Kraft last week at the seminar and I was telling him like, you just don't even realize it because it becomes your normal. But really for like the seven years that I competed, I really lived with pretty intense neck and back pain. Um, and a lot of that's from overabundance of handstand pushup because I needed to train at such a high volume for that to uh, be able to keep up with all the, uh, you know, five, six, 140 pound guys. So, 
Uh, so that's something for me uh, that I will caution you guys on and I will put a lot of caution inside of the programming. And don't be surprised if the coaches come around and tell you this is a better safe than sorry exercise. This is not something that like, hey, it's on the board, it's programmed, I'm just gonna kick up and see what happens kind of a thing. This is really a follow the progression kind of a thing, right? Figure out where you sit, where are you going to get the most training value out of this? Remember, the goal is not to come in that day and be able to do handstand push-ups. The goal is to get you better at pressing your body weight in an inverted position, okay? Or for push-ups, even just being able to press your own body weight, right? Staggering to me how many people always want to work on handstand push-ups before they can do 10 really good high-quality regular push-ups, okay? That's ass backwards. And it's the same thing you start talking about when we do our strict press tests. If you guys aren't close to a body weight strict press, we probably don't have a lot of purpose or need to start working into handstand pushups. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to kip, you're gonna start to move your body all over the place and flail and get all these things going just so that you can achieve the lockout from your head being on the ground. And that's not really helping us get better at anything, okay? So understand why you're doing what you're doing, okay? Now, obviously we'll do the open in the spring and uh, I don't want to get to the point where handstand push-ups come up and nobody's done any and they're unprepared for that. So I want to make sure that we're doing some things like that. But if you guys are here, just, you know, health, fitness, um, development and strength development, position development and all that stuff, you guys can stick to your push-ups or stick to your scales. You guys can do your ring push-ups and that kind of stuff. And you are going to get way stronger, way better. You're going to get a ton out of that training. Uh, and you're not going to be at a significantly lower risk. So just keep that stuff in mind. Uh, that's just my word of caution for the handstand push-ups. Uh, you know, I don't like to see anybody, uh, as Dr. Alm calls it, CrossFit things. Uh, which is, you know, now as people start going and CrossFit starts to come up on you know, 15 years of data and, you know, we're kind of on 10 years of data. Uh, one of the things that I can tell you is that doing more handstand push-ups doesn't necessarily make you a lot better at doing handstand push-ups, right? Uh, a lot of it is just actual how much you can strict press and doing some of those single arm dumbbell access accessory work or even just strict press and push press work is actually going to probably have a, a lot bigger benefit to you at getting better at the movements. Uh, doing the handstand push-ups themselves are more of like an awareness piece, right? It's a gymnastics piece. We're learning how to move our bodies appropriately in space uh, in a difficult position, okay? So it would be like learning how to do, you know, a strict pull-up or a strict muscle-up, right? It's not that there's a lot more value of doing a strict muscle-up than there is a strict chest-to-bar pull-up, but what we think about is the little bit of awareness that you have to achieve at that skill portion of the transition here makes it an extra challenge for both your body and your mind to understand that movement. So there's some value in that, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. The gymnastics pieces this time will be uh, a little bit uh, less oriented, <clears throat> less designed, where we just did a ton of toe to bar work, a ton of core work. And so now we're gonna start working on uh, kind of taking that core work and working to some of the extremities. So I hope you guys enjoyed the ring stuff. I'm really excited for it. And the, uh, the ab blasters will still happen once or twice a week. So if you guys like those, I know they've been a huge wake up call to me. Like I have, I, I usually think I have a pretty strong core and then man, I start like, I can't even hold a 20 second plank in some of these, uh, that like plank row workout. There are a couple other ones where like I just start shaking and dying like right away. And some of these Tabatas have been absolutely kicking my butt. And so, uh, so I hope if they're kicking my butt, they're kicking your butt and we're going to keep that stuff up uh, so that we can keep getting that core value. Last one, we're going to talk about how we're going to be breathing hard uh, during this cycle. Okay. Now, uh, we get to do some of my favorite workouts. And the first one up here I have underlined. This is the one I want you guys to come in and we're going to be testing in next week. And I want you guys to come in cash if you're taking pre-workout if you guys are coming in and uh, you're going to get juiced up for anything two minutes all out effort pick your machine i'm so scared jesse okay so you guys can do row you can do concept two bike you can do echo bike you can do aerodyne up to you i don't care uh even i guess if you guys want to you can do burpees too um but what we want to test here is your max capacity, okay? How much are you able to actually put in terms of power output in two minutes, 
Okay. So that's going to be our one of our big tests. We will test that in and test that out. And that's going to be one of those ones you're going to do apples to apples. Okay. So if you do it right, the test out should make you more nervous than anything you do the entire year. Test in maybe two, but test out for sure because you're going to be trying to beat your time from eight weeks before. Don't skip that day. Okay. I think that's going to be Friday of next week. Don't shy away from it. You got to lean into it. I know it's kind of scary, right? And it's going to leave you feeling weird. And hopefully it doesn't give you like Fran cough as the weather starts changing. But that's our big goal. Okay. So if I can prep you guys for anything with this, prep for that. Okay. The unknowns we're going to do on Veterans Day. So that's going to be unique and that's going to be a little bit different. That's going to make it a long week for you guys and for us and everything because we are going to go on Sunday. Okay. So we're going to go on Sunday. I'll release the heat times. We'll still have Thrive. And we'll still have some of the kids and teens will be joining us for the unknowns. But uh, we'll still run those Sunday classes. And then we'll do the unknowns and heat kind of around that. Okay. So my assumption right away is going to be like a 7 o'clock heat and a 9.30 heat. And then maybe like an 11. Okay. So those will probably, don't, don't quote me on that, but those will probably be our heat times for the unknowns on Sunday, November 11th, which is Veterans Day. And uh, I know you guys... Uh, are probably psyched for that. I know I am. The November one's quite a bit more fun usually than the hot uh, Memorial Day one. Okay. Then we're going to do CrossFit Total. Now we will not test in CrossFit Total. Okay. So we're going to test in the lifts kind of individually. All right. So uh, we'll do a, We won't test the back squat. We'll start back squatting and then you'll be able to test out the back squat to kind of see where you're at with that. Uh, but we'll start doing the, the deadlift test and the strict press test. So you guys, guys will kind of know where you're at with that. Uh, remember the strict press is one of those ones where like in eight weeks, it's really hard to really put on more than maybe five pounds or 10 pounds for the strict press. If you can do that, that's awesome. That's a huge gain. And then remember we have the fractional plate. So you guys can PR by one or two pounds on that also. Um, and then the deadlifts obviously will hit and you guys can go sumo or conventional. I don't think that CrossFit total really matters. Just pick one that's good for you. And then the last one guys is Co. Co is a hero workout with ring pushups and thrusters. It's 10 rounds of 10 and 10. Really challenging workout. Now in the past we've kind of started with a test in of this workout and everybody has like this just absolutely ridiculous muscle fatigue in their triceps and in their shoulders uh, because they were unprepared from a ring push-up perspective, okay? What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna actually kind of do the full cycle of the ring push-ups and uh, make sure that we are building good volume and good development before that so that that's not such a shock to the system. And then we will test out with Co around the holiday time frame. So that'll be one of our kind of like holiday workouts. We'll do the the... 12 days of Christmas workout, partner workout, uh, usually on Christmas or Christmas Eve. I haven't looked at the calendar yet there. Uh, but then that week in between Christmas and New Year's is when we're going to hit Co. And we'll come in, we'll hit it hard. It's a super, in my opinion, it's probably it's one of the most challenging workouts. Uh, it's a hero. It's not super long. But man, it is it is super potent. And so, uh, so we'll hit that. And if you guys have done it before, awesome. You guys will be able to retest and uh, check your time. If you guys have never done it before, we'll set kind of a benchmark. And then we'll do that in about a year's time. And you guys can kind of see your development there as we like to do. So that'll kind of be our main focuses for the cycle. We'll probably obviously do some other benchmarks. What you guys can expect is we're going to be doing a lot of all-out efforts here. Okay. And so we're going to be kind of testing that. Two minutes is going to be the test. But when we're actually training that, it's going to be 20, 30 seconds, right? So we're going to maybe do 20-second aerodyne sprints, five clean and jerks at 185, right? And so boom, boom, and then big rest, right? Like 30 to 40 seconds of work hard and then like two and a half minutes off. And the whole design of that is for, to get you guys used to going at a higher pace, okay? You absolutely have to learn how to put that intensity into fast burst efforts. It's hugely applicable to our everyday life. I just read a great study yesterday talking about sprint development, right? And how our natural walking pace will decline. The pace of everything that we do to move our body declines rapidly once we get past 40 years old if we don't continue to train in that sprint mentality. 
We can prolong so much of our health by continuing to keep the fast twitch fibers working and moving, right? But we have to put that intensity, that aggressiveness into it. And so if we're not doing that, that's a huge training miscalculation, right? And a lot of CrossFit stuff doesn't really go inside of that sprint mentality. So that's what we're going to be putting a huge focus on this cycle. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be really tough, especially if you guys do it right. Uh, but there's a ton of training value there. And I hope that you guys kind of lean into that one also, uh, just like we do with the, with the two minute all out effort. I know you guys love Co. I know CrossFit Total and the Unknowns. Those are two of the best community days that we have. And so uh, so you guys will have plenty of fun outside of that stuff. So looking forward to this cycle, guys. This will wrap up the year for us. This will take us into the end of December. Then we'll do our January cycle. We'll pair that with squat cycle. And, uh, and there will be a lot of fun stuff coming at the beginning of the year. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys.